Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today's video is sponsored by Helix Sleep, a premium in a box mattress company that brings mattresses that fit your preferences and needs. Take the Helix Sleep quiz and enter your sleep position, your mattress size, your mattress firmness preferences, and Helix Sleep will match you with a mattress to fit your needs. So I myself am a side sleeper. I share my bed with my husband. We prefer a full size bed. We like to be nice and snugly next to each other. And Helix Sleep matched us with the Helix Dusk Lux. We've had the mattress now for several months and we've had great sleep. My back feels supported while the top remains soft and squishy and comfortable. So it's a perfect balance of support and comfort. Prior to our Helix Sleep mattress, we had inherited a mattress that was very sad indeed. Had it for many, many years. So to have a Helix Sleep mattress is a real treat. Did you know on average we spend about 40% of our day in bed? 40%. We don't even think about that because we're sleeping, but that is a significant part of our day. So it is so important for that to be comfortable sleep. So I really like that Helix Sleep customizes the mattresses to your needs. So free shipping is included and your mattress will come in a box, which makes it really great for moving around. I was able to get it up the stairs and installed the mattress myself. Like for us, we have a very narrow stairwell, so it was great to be able to move two twin mattresses right up the staircase with relative Helix mattresses also come with a 100 night sleep trial and a 10 year warranty. So if you'd like to try Helix Sleep for yourself, click the link down below to see how you can get up to $200 off your Helix Sleep mattress along with two free pillows. Big thanks to Helix Sleep for sponsoring this video and for their continued support. So today we're going to be making a Ugandan Rolex. Rolex, isn't that a great name? Of course, the first thing you think of is the very expensive watch, but we're not gonna be cooking any watches today. We're going to be making a very popular street food in Uganda that consists of a chapati, which is a unleavened bread, flatbread, that contains an egg omelet inside, and then it is rolled up, hence, Rolex. It sounds and looks absolutely delicious. I watched several videos. I'll put links down below for all of those references and I can't wait to taste it. But the first thing we must do is make the chapati. Now chapati is flatbread that originally came from India, but the version I'm going to be making today is definitely East African. It contains oil to create the flaky layers in between the layers of dough. So I watched several videos on how to make East African chapati and the recipe I'm going to be using today is adapted from Chef Lola's kitchen and I'll put a link down below to their original video. So in a large bowl, we are going to add three cups of all-purpose flour. To that, we're gonna add one teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of sugar. Next, three tablespoons of vegetable oil. I'm using grapeseed oil. Incorporate that together. And then I have one and a quarter cups of water and I'm gonna slowly add this until it forms a nice soft dough. This is an unleavened dough, meaning there's no baking powder, no baking soda, no yeast, nothing to create any air bubbles to puff up the bread. Oops. This is one of my favorite tools when it comes to making bread. It is a little plastic bench scraper or dough scraper. It's really great for getting sticky doughs off your hands and off <laughs> your utensils. I also have a metal one of these, and this is one of the few instances where I actually prefer plastic. It's flexible, so it allows me to follow the curve of my bowl and really scrape every little bit of flour or dough. And now I'm just gonna get in there with my hands and form this into a dough. You can certainly make this dough in a stand mixer, but I'm gonna opt for doing it all by hand today. Onto my clean countertop. Now we're going to knead this for 10 or 15 minutes is quite a long time but it's really important because we want this dough to be nice and smooth and elastic right now it is very shaggy you see that the kneading process allows the gluten strands which are the protein strands to interlink and join together it creates for a very stretchy pliable dough in leavened bread that allows us to get a nice rise this bread of course isn't leavened but it'll make for shaping the dough much easier as well so already just after a couple minutes it's already getting smoother after our dough is smooth and supple, we're going to oil the top of it and the bottom of our bowl, place it into the bowl, 
and let the dough rest for about 20 to 30 minutes. This resting time is really important. It allows the dough to relax so that when we roll it out, it'll actually stay rolled out rather than kind of shrinking back in. So I will see you when our dough is ready. And now we are going to shape the chapati. I'm gonna divide this into six equal pieces. I'm gonna tuck these under, like that. Keep the balls of dough covered while you're working, and we're going to roll the dough out. Now Lola says that you can have plain chapati, which do not have the layers, but layers are preferred. So I'm gonna go with the layered. I recently made jacnun, which is a Yemeni Israeli bread, that also requires a lot of rolling and laminating with oil as well. So once the dough is rolled out, we're gonna apply a little bit of oil. Use a brush to distribute that. And we're gonna roll this up tightly. Now there are many different ways to create the layers. This is just one technique but all of them have the same idea, which is to have oil to separate the layers. So then we stretch it, coil the dough on itself, creating a spiral like that. Isn't that cute? Like a little snail. <laughs> this is another technique of rolling. You just slice the circle, oil it, and roll it into a cone, going all the way around the perimeter of the circle. And then you just smoosh it, smoosh it down. Another way to create the layers. Another way to do it is to accordion the dough. So forward, backwards, forward, backwards, forward and backwards forward and backwards. Stretch it and coil it. Like that. Now we're gonna take our spiral and flatten it out and then give it a roll. Now I've got my preheated skillet here. I'm gonna add a little bit of oil. Nice sizzle there. And we're just gonna fry this on both sides until the chapati is fully cooked. So Chef Lola actually recommends cooking this in a non-stick skillet, but every single Ugandan street food video I saw, they were cooking them on cast iron griddles, so I just really want to do it this way. Alrighty, we're ready to flip, here we go. Yes, look at that, it's looking beautiful. Alrighty, so I'm gonna cook up all the chapati and then we'll finally be able to start building our Rolex. All right, my lovelies, let's go ahead and make the egg portion of the Rolex. So in a cup, I'm going to crack in two eggs. And to that, I'm gonna add a little bit of green cabbage. Probably about two tablespoons. Boop. One of the things I learned about watching Ugandan street food vendors make the Rolex is that they don't use a cutting board to cut their tomato. Cut the top off of the tomato. Then they cross hatch the top of the tomato and then just Cut that right into the cup. Isn't that brilliant? Probably about a teaspoon of tomato. We're gonna to do the same thing with an onion. So I'm gonna use just a tiny bit of pepper. Next, we're gonna add a little bit of salt. So there's the contents of our cup. Now comes the noisy part. We're just gonna beat everything up. Now I've got my griddle preheating. I'm gonna add a generous amount of oil to the pan and give it a swirl. And once it starts to shimmer, we know that it's ready. Alrighty, here we go. Ah, oh, this is gonna be great. Spread our omelet mixture. Now we want this to be the same size as our chapati because we're going to roll them together. So this is looking so good. And now we're gonna flip this over. Ready? Oh, yes. 
That looks beautiful. Now we are finally ready to assemble the Rolex. I've turned off the heat on my egg. Over here, I've got my plate of chip patties that I made. So stinking beautiful, whole stack of them. I used a towel to cover them up to keep them nice and toasty. Now we're gonna transfer the egg right on top of the chapati. That's gonna be good. Okay, here we go. Da, 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 da. Oh, this looks so good. Ah. Da, 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 da. There it is, the Ugandan Rolex. If you're eating this on the streets, this would be placed in a plastic bag and then taken to go, but it looks absolutely phenomenal. Here we go. Itadakimasu. Mm. Look at that. It's so beautiful inside. I can definitely taste the onion in there, the slight acidity from the tomato. One thing I would really love is just an addition of some heat, some spicy heat. It's so good and so handy and easy to carry and warm and absolutely scrum diddly umptious. <laughs> so when you tear the chapati, it has, you see that? You get these beautiful layers. Isn't that beautiful? Let's just have some chapati by itself. Mm -hmm. It has a great chewy texture to it. That's a little bit reminiscent, say, to a tortilla, but this has more oil in it, so it's a little bit different in texture. All right, my lovelies, that's how you make a Ugandan Rolex at home. Thanks so much for watching, and big thanks to Helix Sleep for sponsoring this video. If you'd like to try Helix Sleep for yourself, click the link down below to see how you can receive up to $200 off your Helix Sleep mattress and two free pillows. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye.